JSC BTA Bank versus Krapanov. Lord Sumption will summarize the, the judgment in that case. This appeal is about an elaborate attempt by a judgment debtor to hide his assets so as to prevent enforcement against him of the judgment. Uh, Mr. Mukhtar Abliazov was the chairman and controlling shareholder of JSC BTA Bank, a bank incorporated in Kazakhstan. He held that office between 2005 and 2009. He was removed from office when the bank was nationalized in 2009 and fled to England, where he obtained asylum. The bank brought various claims against him in the English High Court. The basis of these claims is an allegation that during the four-year period of his chairmanship, Mr. Abliazov embezzled some $6 billion of the bank's funds. At the outset of the litigation, the bank obtained an order requiring Mr. Abliazov to identify and disclose the whereabouts of his assets and a worldwide freezing order preventing him from dealing with them. In 2010, the High Court also appointed receivers over those assets. It later transpired that Mr. Abliazov had failed to disclose large numbers of his assets and had sought to place them beyond the reach of the bank through a network of undisclosed foreign companies. In 2011, the bank consequently obtained an order uh, committing Mr. Abliazov to prison for contempt of court. He was sentenced to, two month, to, sorry, to 22 months imprisonment. By the time the judgment had been handed down, however, Mr. Abliazov had fled the country. His present whereabouts are unknown. Meanwhile, default judgments in the sum of 4.6 billion US dollars have been obtained against him but very little has been recovered. In 2015, the bank brought the present claim against Mr. Abliazov and his son-in-law, Mr. Krapunov, who lives in Switzerland. The bank alleges that Mr. Krapunov, being aware of the freezing and receivership orders, entered into a combination or understanding with Mr. Abliazov in order to help him dissipate and conceal his assets. The judge found that they entered into it in England. Mr. Krapunov is said to have been instrumental in the process of hiding assets held by foreign companies and in concealing what became of those assets. The bank says that these actions constitute the tort of conspiracy to cause financial loss to the bank by unlawful means. The unlawful means alleged of that he committed a series of breaches of the freezing and receivership orders in contempt of the High Court. This appeal is only concerned with the position of Mr. Krapunov. He has applied to contest the jurisdiction of the High Court on two grounds. In the Court of Appeal, he failed on both. The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses his appeal for reasons set out in a judgment prepared by myself and Lord Lloyd-Jones. Mr. Krapunov's first ground is that he cannot be liable for conspiracy to commit a contempt of court because contempt of court, although criminal, is not actionable in tort. An action cannot, he says, constitute unlawful means so as to make a tortious conspiracy unless it is itself actionable. This argument has failed in both courts below and this court is of the view that it must fail here too. It is an actionable conspiracy to join together with others to do an act by unlawful means which damages another person. An unlawful means conspiracy is an independent tort. It is not just a device for making somebody liable for the acts of his co-conspirators. The wrong consists in entering into the conspiracy. The conspirator is then primarily liable for all the foreseeable consequences of the conspiracy which he has entered into. It is not necessary to show that the unlawful means would have constituted a different tort even if there had been no conspiracy. The correct test is whether there is a just cause or excuse for combining to use unlawful means. There is rarely, if ever, a just cause or excuse for committing a criminal act, and none exists in this case. A conspiracy to use unlawful means consisting in a contempt of court is therefore actionable whether or not contempt of court would itself be actionable. Mr. Krapunov also argued that there was a public policy precluding liability on that basis in the particular case of contempt of court. 
but this court is satisfied that no such public policy exists. Mr. Krapunov's second argument is that the English court has no jurisdiction over him because he is domiciled in Switzerland. He says that the Lugano Convention, which governs jurisdiction over Swiss domiciled parties, does not confer jurisdiction in a case like this. Under the convention, a person must be sued in the country of his domicile, in this case Switzerland, unless a relevant exception applies. One such exception is for cases where what is called the harmful event occurred in England. Mr. Krapunov submits that the only thing which occurred in England was that according to the judge, he entered into the conspiracy in England. That, he says, was not the harmful event. The harmful event uh, was the acts done pursuant to the conspiracy, and all of those were done elsewhere. The Supreme Court, again, unanimously rejects this submission. Where a chain of events causes damage to a person, the harmful event includes the act which sets the process in motion. In this case, uh, that is the act of entering into the conspiracy in England. It follows that the English court has jurisdiction in respect of all the consequences of the conspiracy alleged in this case. The court is now adjourned. <laughs>